Shalom Chavrim. It's nice to get a chance to speak with you. And uh, we did a little rearranging here in our office here. We're trying to reset up for a little bit, uh, uh, well, a different format in viewing here. Uh, so uh, I pray you kind of bear with us there. I don't know how the audio is going to come out. We're, we're doing a little different audio setup. But we wanted to have it to where we could look at our computers and stuff and, and really get into some information. Um, I want to kind of take you into some issues that we're dealing with um, that have been very disturbing. Uh, Jason from uh, Revelation News Radio, uh, that's Blog Talk Radio, sent me an article today on Facebook uh, about Tex Mars book. Um, let me just see what the name of this book is. DNA Unearthed Stunning Secrets. Secret Jews are Khazars. And uh, when I got this, and of course some of the information coming out about Kerry and what he's up to right now and the things that he is saying on the different uh, news platforms, we're into some serious, serious times and some uh, serious problems. I mean, it's really and truly, even the way Jason put it to me here, we are, uh, it's like Nazism all over again. Uh, so I'm very concerned about the information that's coming out. And uh, I think, though, before I go into Tex Mars book a little bit, uh, which we will be going live on the air Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern on Revelation News Radio, um, and that's Blog Talk Radio. Jason will post on our website, or excuse me, on our Facebook page uh, at Stephen Denoon, um, or at Stephen Ben Denoon. I forget how that's listed. I think it's Stephen Denoon. If you look that up on there, you'll be able to find me easy enough. You can you can send me a friend request. We'll gladly add you to our list there. Uh, but uh, Jason will probably put that show up there on there, and then we will share it with you. Uh, but we will be discussing the very book of. Uh, Tex Mars and his DNA unearths that uh, he's basically saying that the, the Ashkenazi Jews are not Jews. And, uh, and I know he's not saying all of them are not because I do have a little audio clip here I'm going to share with you shortly here what he says to Alex Jones before, I guess, before he wrote this book here uh, that uh, is disturbing as well. The Sephardic Jews, he, uh, Alex kind of corners him on that and he believes that they are Jews. Well, that's my father's side, so... Neither, regardless of his, re Ashkenazi Jews are Jews. Period. Uh, it's just it's Satan's slant for the Vatican agenda is really what it is. John Kerry, uh, good Catholic boy, no doubt. Let me just kind of show you some things that John is doing. This is reported in the Haaretz. Uh, the dating of this article here is June seventh, twenty thirteen. Uh, it says, why U.S. Jews must embrace Kerry's appeal to put pressure on Netanyahu. Stunned by Israel, shrug your shoulders. Everything will be fine approach to peace negotiations. The U.S. administration is saying with impressive clarity, if Israel, uh, excuse me, if Israel stands alone in the world, even the support of America will not be enough. You're going to get some more serious articles than just this one. Uh, when it comes to Israel, there are two kinds of Jews, those who believe that the occupation of the West Bank can go on forever and those who don't. Uh, scrolling down in the article a little further here, it said, This past week, Secretary of State Kerry addressed himself to, to, to the nothing-can-ever-change view of things, speaking with a power and passion that we don't always hear from him. Kerry delivered a simple, uh, uh, immensely clear message Time is up, disaster is at hand, and therefore a way must be found to arrive at peace agreement between Israelis and Palestinians that will end the occupation, not in the distant future, but very soon, and American Jews must help. This is not the way that senior administration officials usually talk to Jewish groups about Israel. They hint, imply, suggest, and often uh, equ uh, equivocate. They are careful not to offend, but Mr. Kerry chose bluntness and candor on his way to an emphatic conclusion. The status quo is simply not sustainable. This was a speech, it should be said, that was lovingly delivered. Kerry, after all, is a man with impeccable pro-Israel credentials, and his personal concern and devotion to Israel were amply on display. Hogwash. He doesn't care about Israel, not one single bit. 
He cares about the Vatican agenda. And you know what's interesting? I had a phone call today from a gentleman uh, who I believe, I, I don't want to say for sure, but I believe that he is from the Muslim uh, faith. And we had a very insightful conversation. And one of the points that I point out to this, uh, to this uh, friend here is that the Palestinian people are being used by the Vatican. And he was surprised at my statement on that. And I told him, I said, do you not realize that the Vatican is only using the Palestinian people? Now, I can't say that he is Palestinian himself. I have no idea. But I, I do know that he talked to me uh, from things from the Quran. And uh, we shared back and forth different uh, views and different opinions. Uh, but it was very interesting that he was totally unaware that the Vatican is using the Palestinians. And I quoted to him, from Daniel the prophet and uh, where he speaks about the prince that shall come and how that he would come up strong with a small people. I said, that is the Vatican using the Palestinians for a two-state solution. Uh, there will no doubt come a two-state situation from all of this. It's biblically written there. We see it in Rebecca in the story there when God tells Rebecca, you have two nations in your womb and when they come forth from the womb, they will be separated. And he said, two nations. It was a prophecy concerning Israel. It's a prophecy concerning the Palestinians getting their own state, their own nation. Israel being separated into their own nation. Oh, gosh, friends, stunning times here. But now the Secretary of State, uh, uh, John Kerry, is now putting the pressure on American Jewry as well. And I say to you, my brothers in America, the Jews of America, do not bow down to American political pressure. Stand your ground. Stand for Israel. Do not accept a two-state solution. It is a final solution. And we get into text Mars's information. You'll see what I'm talking about. Now, he kind of hints around when he talks to... Uh, to um, Alex Jones, that he's kind of like for the Jews, kind of in a little bit. But when it comes right down to it, it is nothing but Nazism agenda at its finest uh, for America's uh, modern days that we're dealing with. Okay, let's take a look here at another little spot here. Um, this here was a video that uh, John Kerry was in. Uh, he says, if the peace talks fail, Israel will be isolated and sanctioned. And the United States will join in on that. The entire world will turn against Israel. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Uh, but, but now I say that, but you got to remember, I know they won't be sanctioned because Israel is going to crack under the pressure. This is why we have the nine months. This is why Micah chapter 4 talks about Zion is in travail. Gosh, friends. Okay, I'll tell you what. Let me let you real quick, I want you to hear just a little bit of what Tex Mars has to say here uh, while he is talking to Alex Jones. Let's listen up to this for a second. Very good Zionist Jew, and he wrote the 13th tribe. He said they came, all of the historians and archaeologists have always said this. I wanted to, that's around Georgia. Yeah, I, I wanted to know the truth. I wanted to say, well, what is the truth on this? Well, now we have DNA evidence that says the Jews are converts. They're pagans who converted to Judaism. They do not, their, their bloodlines do not go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And not only that, but, but Dr. Elhite, who is Jewish, uh, who is a real fighter there, he says there's no doubt about it. It's science. So what happens? What do all the Christians do? I, I, I want to say this. Uh, Henry Kissinger knew of this study. He knows of this. Uh, I, I think the the the, the, the well, it's really chic to hate Israel, uh, and, and I, I see them building it up, Antichrist stuff. Like I mean, he claims to be and then kills them. I mean, this is crazy, right? The elite. That's what I'm saying. It's more sophisticated. They have been have, have latched on to Israel as a as a tactic, as a, as a strategy. I saw America's plunging in the polls. They have us do the dirty work, then they destroy us. You know, it's interesting that they, they bring out the idea that the elite have lunged on to Israel. If anything, the elite has worked for the Vatican itself. It, no wonder why they have a Jesuit pope in, in, in the Vatican now. And, and of course, I've heard some people suggest that Tex Mars also is a Jesuit. I, I don't know the, 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 whether this is true or not, so I'm not going to speak that 
against him. I, I'm not sure. But there is, the, the elite only had one purpose in mind if they have any hand in this at all. And that was to be able to push forward the Vatican agenda. Because you have to understand, Satan said he wanted to be worshipped as if he were God. He wanted to sit in the temple of God and be exalted like, and be like the Most High. Well, according to Scripture, the Antichrist gets three and a half years to be just like that. And so this is why the push for a Palestinian state and the only way the Jews will basically be forced to swallow the deal is when they tell them, well, we're going to build a third temple right beside the Dome of the Rock. We're going to let it be built on the Temple Mount. That's what will make Israel fall for nonsense. You see, Ezekiel's prophecy, the temple comes down from God out of heaven. But yet, should we be in our homeland? Absolutely. This is where Mashiach comes. And it's, 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 it's becoming rampant everywhere. All this hate against Israel. Listen, listen just a little bit more what, what they have to say. Absolutely. Look, the Rothschilds and the others are Sabbatean Jews. They worship Satan. They, 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 don't, they don't worship the Bible. They have a serpent that they worship. I know this sounds fantastic. Of course it is. But what we have is because of that hate. You know, you know, it's kind of funny there. What would they have said about Moses then? Moses was raised up in Pharaoh's house under all the gods of Egypt. He forsook the gods of Egypt and accepted only Hashem, the God of Israel. Yehovah is the only one he accepted. But what would they have said about him? What would they have said about Moses when God commanded him to put a serpent, a brass serpent on a pole and raise it up and tell the people, look and live? What would you have to say about that? What would they say about when Israel, when God commanded them, borrow from the Egyptians all the gold that you have need of. What would they say about that? Oh, well, the Rothschilds helps you build this. You know what? God has a way of doing things to be sure. You know, a lot of your true Jews, the ones that really from the heart that love God, they don't got a lot of money. They don't got a whole lot of ways to get back home. And so God does use other people to help them get back home. In fact, when I was sitting with Sid Roth the other day in his office and I was talking to him, I said something to him that surprised him, something he'd never heard before. I told him, I said, Sid, do you realize in the story of Boaz, when we read about Ruth there, the Moabites, Naomi was a type of the diaspora. The Jews that had been scattered away. And she came back home and she said, don't call me Naomi, call me bitter. Because the Lord has looked bitterly upon me. But she came back home just the same. And Ruth begins to glean from the four corners of, the, of Boaz's field. And as, he, as she begins to glean from the, four field, from the four corners there, the Lord began to deal with me on that as I read that scripture there. The law of Moses has said, leave the four corners and do not touch them. It's for the Gentile, for the Goim, for the nations to be able to, to glean those, the poor and the foreigners. God placed that law in our word there and Ruth showing what it was all about right there was for the Gentiles to come and help glean the lost of Israel. When I say the lost, it's not just the lost tribes of Israel, but I'm talking about all 12 tribes. That Gentile is to reach out there and to bring back the lost of Israel back to their homeland. Israel has to be in the homeland. And Boaz wanted Ruth for his wife, but the only way Boaz could get Ruth for his, for his wife, a bride from Mashiach, he had to redeem Naomi at the exact same time. And Naomi has to be in the homeland. Israel has to be in her homeland before she can be revealed or before she can be redeemed. Oh, my gosh. Let's listen a little bit more here. It's an area north of Georgia. That, I mean, that was right. a... Right, Kazakhstan, Georgia, all yeah. those areas uh, in there. Those people migrated over to Europe. There were three million Polish people. Now, when Israel was formed, David Ben Gurion, the first prime minister, was a Polish guy. Shimon Peres is Polish. They, 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 that wasn't even their names. They changed their names to sound like they were Israelites. So we have a nation of imposters. But we change your names. 
You, you know, that's, that's, that's fascinating. What, what, what did Moses do? Oh, I'm, he, I'm sure he had an Egyptian name. What about Joseph? He had an Egyptian name. Did he change his name too? What are you going to do with my name? Oh, wow. Literally, legally, my name is Benun, Joshua's name. Must be a Sephardic name in there somewhere, huh? But yeah, we did change our name, but we did it the opposite way around. Back because of the Inquisition, they changed it to Dinun to try to get away from being look like we're Jews. How many Jews did that, Mr. Texmars? So that no one would know that they're Jews. How many? Laurie Cadoza Moore, my good friend, I tell you, sister, you got your hands full, and I, I'm ready to battle right there along with you against this anti-Semitism. It's coming from every corner. It's coming in slick. I am seeing Christians like nuts just swallow this hook, line, and sinker. I mean, they're choking on all of this. Rob Skiba, another one. A man that stood with Israel, stood with the Jewish people at one time and man everywhere are confounded. Many Christians believe that people who today claim to be Jews, descendants of Abraham, are exactly what they claimed. They were exactly what they claimed. They told us they were the chosen, the apple of God's eye. They insisted that their ancestors, their founding fathers, had been given to the land of Israel and the old covenant made over 5,000 years ago, and many believe them. They should have, they, excuse me, they shouldn't have is what he says here. Christians should have read their Bibles and believe what God says. The Apostle Paul warned us there to beware of the foolishness of genealogies. By the way, what Paul is speaking of, for those of you that don't understand that is, Israel has always been a, ge a, a genealogical brought down as far as who we are who our fathers' fathers were, etc. But let me point out a couple of little points to you here, though, to straighten some of this issue out. We are God's chosen people. And believe me, for a long time, we haven't wanted to be the chosen people because of all that has happened to our people. Does not the Scripture say in Hosea, let me pull this up for you, you know, text, you're so quick to, to, to judge right there, that, uh, you know, from some bogus DNA testing because Jews did it. Did you ever think that it was Judas, a Jew that sold out Jesus? No, no nobody seems to want to think about these things here, do they? Amazing, absolutely amazing at how stupid people can get. And I, I'm not sitting there just pointing a finger at text here in this case here. I'm just talking about in general. People can become so foolish in their thinking. What does he say here in, in Hosea chapter 5, verse 14? For I will be unto Ephraim as a lion, as a young lion to the house of Judah. I even I will tear and go away. I will take away and none shall rescue. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. God promised us that we would have an affliction. Who has suffered more in this world than the people that say they are the descendants of Abraham and we have been murdered by the millions? In every walk, the Inquisition, the pogroms, Stalin, Hitler, Mussolini. How much more? Do you think that the Jewish people... You know, if it's just a little convert or something out there, do you think they would have just, uh, man, they believe, I guarantee you one thing, they would have converted real quick to Christianity or something to get off that, get that heat off their backs. But they didn't. They stood. Come and let us return to the Lord, for he hath torn and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us, and the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. That's been 2,700 and some odd years ago. We are in that third day. Israel is in her homeland. The word of God is being fulfilled. It is being made manifest. Anyway, um, look, we're going to get into a lot more of this, and I, uh, I strongly encourage any Jew and every Jew that there is out there, go home. We need to go home. We are looking for Mashiach. 
And if you don't feel in your heart to go, then you need to listen to what I'm telling you about who the Mashiach is. Come and let us reason together who Mashiach really is. And don't accept this anti-Semitism. Until we meet again, God bless you.